Hi everyone. So in this video, what I'm going to be covering is a little bit different to a lot of my previous videos. This is going to be a tutorial on how we can use the Microsoft Word equation mode. Now, as you may have seen from my IA and EE videos, I have reiterated that it is very important to maintain mathematical notation and correct formatting. So if we take a look over here on this right side, I have created these handwritten equations which I want us to translate into this Word document here using the equation mode. I'm sort of going to go through how to make certain structures and how to format things properly. So let's see, we have, first of all, let 5x plus 10 equal 30. So if we decided just to write that here, let 5x plus 10 equal 30, we can see that this does not look particularly mathematical at all. It, like, I mean, it's possible, but no, we don't want it to look like that. So what we can do is we can go insert, go across to symbols and press equation. If I press that, it converts this into equation mode. Now, there's another thing that we should also be careful of. The word let is an actual word. It is not three pronumerals. It is not three L, E, and T as three pronumerals. That is an actual English word. However, this X here is a pronumeral. Now, we want to make sure that the X is in pronumerals, but these kind of words should not be. So what we do is if we put a quotation mark, start and end of it and press space it creates it in a normal font that makes it a lot easier to sort of work with see now we can distinguish between let as an actual word and x as a pronumeral because they are in two different fonts so we put a quotation mark go there again put a quotation mark at the start and at the end and then you press space and it kicks in now to create a new line we just press shift and enter at the same time now, a bit of a disclaimer, I am doing this on a Windows computer. Now, Macs may have different shortcuts for a lot of these things, or some of them might not apply. So please be wary of that. And I'll also say that if you're a Mac user, pretty much any shortcut where I'm using control and another button, it'll be command and another button for you, all of you Mac people out there. So just keep that in mind. So to create a new line, I held shift and enter at the same time. Now type next equation, let's write down find x. 5x. Once again, find is an English word, so we're going to put this in quotation marks, press space, and there we go. Now, while I'm inside this equation, I'm going to press shift enter again, and we can write everything out. Now, instead of doing that though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip a line and then go into our working. So now we've got 5x plus 10 equals 30, plus 10 equals 30. We can just type that in normally. We don't need to put in any spaces, it automatically does it all for us, which is really neat. Next line, we have 5x, so 5x is equal to 30 minus 10. I'm holding shift, enter, to so keep going next. x is equal to, now we have 30 minus 10 over 5. So what we can do is we know that 30 minus 10 is all in the numerator. So what we can do is we can put brackets, 30 minus 10, close brackets, all over 5. Now, what we can do is we can press space now, and it converts that into the correct fraction. So then we go back, we can see we have 30 minus 10 in brackets. I put it in brackets because we know all of this will be encapsulated in the numerator. And then five is the denominator. We just press space after that and it corrects it. Now we can correct it We can go X equals. And then what we can also do alternatively is we can go to structures, fraction loads. We just want this fraction. And then you can fill in the numerator and denominator manually. So 20 over five. It's entirely up to you which way you prefer. Then finally we get therefore x equals four. Now what's a very important thing in the maths IA is that generally speaking, and for the E, generally speaking, they want the equal signs to align. So what you can sometimes do is we can highlight the whole thing, right click, and we see it says align at equal. We do that and it lines up all the equal signs so they're directly below each other. Generally speaking, that will be what they are looking for in the maths IA, in the EE. So it's a very neat shortcut. Otherwise, if I didn't do that, I could just press space a bunch of times and like move stuff around until it all lines up. But that's all a bit of a trick. So let's just go back to our original strategy, the line at equal sign. There we go. Let's move on to the next one. Our next equation is this. 73 e to the 5x is equal to two times all of this. So quite a lot going on there. Let's get into it. So we can always get straight into equation mode. Now, 
a potential shortcut for the equation mode on Windows is you press hold alt, then press the equal sign. And we're in equation mode. Alt equal, there we go. Now let's start it off. 73e to the power of 5x. So what we can do is I could put in like this, to the power of, then bracket 5x, then press space, and we can see how that works. However, alternatively, what's a, what can be a bit easier is if I highlight this, E, press structures and script. Now we know this is a superscript because we're putting something up at the top. Put that there, and then we can fill in 5x manually. Otherwise, we can do the original strategy I had, which is press this upwards arrow, and then you put everything that would be in the power inside the bracket, then close it, and then you press space. That is the alternative way to write that out. Then we have equals, two times. Now, because this is a fraction within this, we could do the whole original strategy with the slashes and the brackets, but that can be a bit confusing. So instead, I'm just going to insert the structure for the fraction. Brackets, I'll put it in, nine minus three y, all over 10, then close bracket. Now we can see that these brackets do not line up properly. So well, they don't line up with like the whole equation. They're just sort of tiny brackets. So what we do is once you've closed the bracket, you can just press space and it'll automatically fix up the size of the bracket. Then all we can do is once again, e to the power of 5x is equal to, now we have this all over 73. So what I can do is I can create a new fraction structure. Then I can copy this into the numerator and then our denominator is over 73 now. And there we go. Therefore, we can say, okay, 5x is equal to, now we have an ln thing going on here. So what we can do is we can just press ln space and it automatically recognizes this is an ln function and we can automatically just fill in everything inside that now. Now we know from this equation here, we can see this is ln of all of the previous step. So we can just copy in this previous step and paste that inside the ln and we'll be set. Now, what you'll notice is that in my equation, I have a big brackets here to indicate that's all part of the ln. So if we want to keep consistent with that, put our start bracket and end bracket here, press space. And then we can see that bracket fills in everything that is encapsulated within it. And also what you'll notice is this blue line, this blue filling indicates what that bracket's including. So if I go over here, that is like the filling inside the bracket. And if I go up over here to this bracket, we can see that that is including all that. We're going to go next line x equals all of the previous step over five. So once again, I'm going to insert equation over here, structure, fraction, all of the previous step, all of that over five. And there we go, that's our answer. Now to make sure this all looks good, we're going to align at the equal sign. So align it equal, and there we go. Now all our equal signs are directly underneath each other. And there we go, that's our second equation completed. Let's go on to another one. Now for this one, we have a definite integral. Now for those doing AISL that do not really go through the process of subbing in, don't worry too much about the working out, just sort of keep it in mind. I'm just directly copying stuff from my working over here. For those of you doing AA though, or AIHL, I'm sure this should be fairly familiar to all of you. So. First things first, we have an integral. So let's go into equation mode. So we could press Alt and equal to get there, or we can go insert, cross to symbols, equation, and we're in equation mode. Now, what we need is a big structure here because that's a definite integral, it's a fancy symbol. So we go structures, and they have a whole one dedicated just for the integrals. So we're gonna put that in. Now we have an indefinite integral, and a definite integral. Now we look at this, there are bounds. So this is a definite integral. We need those top and bottom bits. So I'm gonna go back to structures and we're gonna know we need this one, not this one. Now this one and this one are basically the same thing, just the formatting, it's like the numbers are on top instead of like along the side and to the top. I'm gonna use this one for now. So now let's put in the bounds. That should be the easy bit. Three, the top one at the bottom, and then what we have is x cubed plus 2x squared plus square root of x plus 1. And we also have that all in brackets and then dx. So let's do this. x cubed, space, and it's x cubed. There we go. Plus 2x squared, space, and there we go, plus. Now for a square root, what we can do is we can go over here 
and put radical. We want just to square root, so we put that in. X, all of that plus one, close bracket, press space to make sure it lines up properly, then put a DX at the end. And there we go. We have lined that all up pretty well. Now what we can do is we can press shift enter and we create a new equation. Now what's also important to note is that if you're within this, when if you have this blue outline, you press shift enter, it, it might create a fraction or something like that, which you don't want. So you make sure you only press shift enter once you're outside of it. So there is none of that blue like highlight. Now press shift enter, we'll create a new line. And we know all that is equal to the square brackets and then three one on the outside. So that's also a special structure. It's gonna be in brackets. Now to do the next step, we have equals, square bracket. So this is all just stuff on the keyboard I'm typing in. Now we have x to the four over four. So we're gonna have x to the four first. I'll press space now to make that x to the four proper, then put all of that over four. So I press space, I made that x to the four properly formatted before putting the over four. Otherwise it might confuse the system. So go step by step. Plus, now we have two x cubed, so I'm gonna put that in, two x cubed space to get that all over three plus 2x, square root x, to do the structure, we need a radical for the square root, x. Now all of that's over three, so what we're gonna do, this in brackets, all of that over three in space, and now make sure everything's, all of that is included in the numerator. All of that plus x. Then we have a closed square bracket. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press space so it lines up everything. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the whole thing because we need this three one thing at the end. So now we're gonna go to structure. I'm gonna go to script because this will dictate how we're gonna move stuff. And I'm gonna click on this one because that indicates that we're gonna have two little things at the top and bottom. We do that and there we go. We have these things that we can now fill in. So three and one. And so I highlighted the whole thing, went over to script and clicked on this one to create those upper and lower bounds that I can sub in. Now that's all done, I've clicked outside, I press shift enter, and then I can write all this stuff out. So three to the power of four, all that over four, plus two times three, to the power of three, all over three, plus two, three, square root three, All over three, all that plus three, minus bracket, then all of this. And four, and four, plus two times one cubed. Oh, I'll put this in the space. Whoops. Yep, two minus cubed, all over three. Yep, plus two times one. And three, plus five. Pressing space to close the bracket and make sure everything lines up. And there we go. And then finally, we have all of that is approximately equal to 42 by one. So what I can do is we can see that this strange equal sign is not really on my keyboard. So what I can do is we have this big section here, symbols. So we're gonna expand that. This is in the basic math section, which is where we wanna be. And we just look for the squiggly equal sign, which means approximately equal to. And I will see it somewhere. Just need to look. There it is. There we go. Approximately equal to 42.1. Now, once again, we just make sure our equal signs are all directly under each other. So I'm going to highlight that, align it equal, and we are fine. It is already lined up perfectly. Now, what I do is I would also space this out so that is above, directly above the start of the equations, just to be a bit consistent. So that is how to put fill in those major structures, including the integral and the big brackets. Let's move on to the next one. So let's say we just had this. Sine theta is equal to one over the absolute of three plus or minus two times 75. Where we can do that is first of all, always, as always, get in equation mode. Now for sine theta. Now to do sine, I can write that sin and press space. It automatically recognizes sine. Similarly, if I had equation mode and I put in cos, and put space, it would immediately recognize that. It'll recognize tan. It'll even recognize sec, I believe. Yep, sec, cosec, cot, all of those things will be even arc, arc cos. 
arc sine or arc tan, all those completely fine. So know that most of these weird trigonometric values operators, if you write down the thing and press space, it'll recognize it straight away. So sine, space. Now I'll also indicate that alternatively you can go structures, you can go function and put sine. And these are all the ones that it'll recognize if you are curious. There's quite a few. So we're going to do sine, we're going to put in theta. Now to find theta, that's not on my keyboard. Either. I don't have a Greek, ancient Greek letter keyboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this in our symbol section and we have basic math. But we're going to expand this and go to Greek letters. And we're just going to look and find theta. And there it is, theta. So sine theta equals so all of that, making sure when I pressed equal, it wasn't within the blue haze, it's outside of it. Because if I was doing it within the blue haze, it'll think that's all part of the sine function. So I'm going to put outside of it, and now press equal. So now it's being treated as a separate thing. And now we have one over all of this. So I'm just going to put one over and then press space. And there we go. Now we have a denominator that we can just fill in ourselves. So now we go structures. And now for an absolute, that is a form of bracket. So we're going to go to brackets and find the absolute version, which is right there. And now we've got our absolute. Now we just write everything inside that. So that's three plus or minus. Now to do plus or minus, I think that's a, yep, okay. What you can do is you can press three and then press the plus button and then press the minus button straight after and it'll create plus or minus. Then you can do two times 75. Now to do the times, we need to go back to basic math and put the times there. So the time symbol in the basic math section is right there. Alternatively, instead of doing the plus minus shortcut that I had done, what I could do is I can put in plus minus like so. Oops. And there we go. So that is just an um, introduction to a few of the functions that are available. Finally, let's say I just had that 5x equals 10 and then x equals 2 underneath it. Now also I don't want to autocorrect it. I can highlight the whole thing and press alt equal to put it in equation mode and we see we still have this here. Now what is important though is that when I pressed enter it skipped a line so that is actually not the correct formatting if we wanted to go from like the word version into the equation mode version. I need to press shift enter so it's directly underneath. Now if I put it in equation mode it'll make sure it is properly directly underneath themselves. Now all you got to do is line up the equal signs so right click align an equal sign and there we go. So that concludes my coverage of how to use the Microsoft Word equation mode. And I hope that sort of clarifies a few things. I very much suggest you play around. There's so many other shortcuts. They have so much in store. A good way to learn a few shortcuts sometimes is if you press, put go in equation mode and then just look at stuff. If I look at this, sometimes they have the shortcut. See how it says proportional two comes up and they have the thing in brackets saying backslash prop two. That is the shortcut. So if I put down backslash prop two and press space, it creates that symbol. So if I just hover my mouse, it gives you in brackets underneath when it says multiplication sign that comes up, they give you the shortcut. So this can be a big time saver, especially if you're going to be using, I don't know, this symbol a lot or this symbol a lot, all those kind of things. So you can hover it over and sometimes there'll be a shortcut backslash var epsilon. So. Please try to familiarize yourselves with that, play around a bit, sort of see how it works. Watch out for like that blue haze, because that's telling you like what is being contained. So like, you know how I have the blue haze here, that's saying, oh, this is all part of the sign. This is what the computer is gonna read. So if I start typing now, it's gonna think all of this is part of that sign function. But if I click outside of it and do this, it does not consider it part of the sign function anymore. So if I put all of that over five, it'll be like that. So. However, whilst if I did it while I was in here, within the blue haze, five, you'll see that it'll be within the sign. So that concludes my coverage and I'll see you all in the next video.